three whys for every what, and then ask for the damn appointment. I don't know how many people I've heard, like great calls. I'm like, I'll change your search and let me know if you see anything. What the hell are you doing? So they say, yeah, hey, man, interest rates are crazy. I am not going to agree with them, but I'm going to understand that. Okay. So they say interest rates are too high right now. So I look, I get it. I'm putting my hands up. I'm taking a step back. That's going to help your tonality really come off gentle and understanding versus, hey, I get it, right? Versus forceful and salesy. Hey, look, man, I get it. Let's just do this for a second. All right, let's just put interest rates going up, going down to the side for a second. Just curious, what, what how'd you start looking in the first place? And I dropped my tonality down, creating a curiosity. Welcome back to another episode of The Agent Goldmine, where today you can expect to learn... Welcome to the Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to the show. Today, you can expect to learn the four step sales process as a real estate agent, how to practice scripts on your own and with a friend, but specifically how to motivate yourself before jumping on the call. Because if you're a cold caller, you need thick skin, how tonality is everything. And we go over a role play on expireds. So if you're calling expireds, listen to this episode. Today's guest is John Marone out of Destin, Florida. He was an agent for three years and now has been coaching for 10. He is a high performance coach. And last year, his clients closed over 2000 homes. You might have heard from him because he's also a keynote speaker. When he's not coaching, he shares the stage with impactful leaders such as Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki and Ed Milet. So this is a jam-packed episode for anyone who's looking to build a sales process and get really good at scripts, which is, spoiler alert, all of you. So gold miners, please welcome John Marone. Okay, John, what, what is a sales process? What does that even mean? Yeah, so sales process begins before the, the actual dialing begins, right? Um, so what we've noticed with a lot of real estate agents is there's a lot of fear, obviously, wrapped around making phone calls. And in this business, Real estate's a contact sport, right? But how many contacts we could make, and by picking up the phone, we could really collapse the time from uh, not knowing somebody, right? Maybe leading our system to to hopefully knowing them, and then creating a conversation that creates conversion. So the sales process is: what do we do before we even get on a call, right? How are we mastering our craft, right? How are we going ahead and and, and up leveling our skills? But then it's what are we doing to intentionally enhance our energy when we're on this sixty minutes of dialing. Right, or one 30 minutes. I don't care if it's just one phone call. What are we intentionally doing to create a structure, right? That's a routine that allows us to create some scalability of when we walk into this call. Think about it like when someone comes out into a football field. I was talking about Ray Lewis, right? He played for the Ravens. The dude's an absolute monster, electrifying. I actually saw one of his last games. He played for the Ravens. This dude will come out of the, the, the tunnel and he would do this little shimmy, right? Do this little shimmy, pick up the grass, throw it in the air, and explode the entire energy up in this audience. And so what are you doing to go ahead and drive your energy up? And as John Maxwell says, be the lid. And then from there, the process on the call is very simple, right? How good is your opening line to not allow the fear of the consumer to jump in? Because think about it this way, right? Humans love to buy, but they hate to be sold. Humans love to buy, but they hate to be sold. When we say, hey, I'm a real estate agent, immediately, no matter how much value you have, you're putting up this wall and all I hear is salesmen, right? And think about when you guys bought a car, right? When you go buy a car, you walk on that lot and this car salesman comes walking up to you, ready to go ahead and get that deal. All of a sudden, he's like, hey, can I help you? You like either jet, you run, no, no, I'm good. But your ass came there to buy a damn car. You wanted that Bro. What do you like? The last time I was at a car dealership, I crawled. Yeah. I shit, I shit, you know, I crawled so that way nobody could see me. I was I came out in the rain. I was like, it's raining. I doubt they're gonna come out. I'm fucking crawling. Well, that's what I mean, right? Like you wanted to buy a car, but as soon as someone says, Hey, can I help you? You're like, hell no. Right. But then you're like, damn it, I need him now because I need to go ahead and get in this car. Right. So in the sales process, when you're on a call, it's the same thing. See, 
80% of our objections come from that opening line. So how do we create an opening line that allows there to be a nonchalant, non-forceful, but super curious type of opening line? And then in the middle where it gets really beautiful as far as the process goes is we're not the Applebee servers in, in what we do. I've right? coached over 14,000 agents and, and we have the highest conversion rate in the industry of 33% from contact to appointment set. It's unheard of. Why? Because we dig three Ys deep for every lens, right? I'm not saying, hey, how many bedrooms? Oh, four. Cool. How many baths? Hell no. I'm staying in a pocket, right? I'm staying in a lane. Because the, the one thing you have to understand is that emotion creates motion. And so in this process, we got the opening line that's super powerful, but curious. You're in the middle, you got your very deep, intentional question asking that allows you to dive three levels deep for every what. And the last but not least is asking for the business and making it so simple, guiding them through the process of saying, hey, look, next step in the process, dude, it's super simple. We're just going to set up a quick 15 minute meeting. So this way we can go ahead, kind of show you what we do here over at X company, but also bring you a list of some handpicked homes. What works better for you, Tuesday or, or maybe Wednesday, right? So, so the process is, what are we doing to enhance our skills? Now, before we get on the call, how, how's our routine look? Are we listening to big booty mixes we we're talking about earlier, right? Are, 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 we, are we meditating? <laughs> you were talking about earlier. <laughs> I was talking about okay? so Are we meditating, right? What are we doing to get into the zone? Now we're on it. And here's our three pieces. Opening line, that's powerful yet curious, not forceful. Three whys for every what? And then ask for the damn appointment. I don't know how many people I've heard, like, great calls. I'm like, I'll change your search and let me know if you see anything. What the hell are you doing? Right? You built this great relationship. Then you just said, I'll never talk to you again. Right? <laughs> Let's be real. So that's the sales process winded. But there's a lot to it. And a lot of people think it's just getting on the phones. In reality, there's an art and science behind sales. Then it's tied to human behavior and human psychology. When you put it all together and make that magic potion, it's beautiful the way you can convert leads, but really create connection. I Okay, this is so, so good. <laughs> okay. I want to back it up from the from the start, right? Because the, as you're as you were talking about this, I I think I, I think it's in the book by Brendan Burchard, High Performance. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yep. He talks about like procrastination, and it really is just if you haven't gotten started to even get on the phone, then it's because you're not motivated enough. So change your motivation. Like literally, don't even eat lunch until you fucking make your calls or whatever it is. And then people will always come on that like on Instagram and be like, oh, in my my morning routine starts the night before and everyone's you know of course you have to prepare to get ready got it but in your preparation you are a very you know just personable guy i love you already and we just met how for those that like i can't love that aren't as lovable how do they get there to before the phone calls how do they prepare yeah great question right because we hear this all the time first off some of those people are really just putting their confidence in an external thing example man like I don't feel good. I'm, I'm good enough because I haven't set any appointments. Well, hold on a minute. Like you don't set the appointments and create confidence. You create the confidence that allows you to set the appointments, right? Confidence is an inside game, right? And so the, the biggest thing I always tell people is that if you want to create more connection, you got to connect with yourself. And people say, I'm a man of my word. I'm a woman of my word. Maybe to others, but not to yourself, right? So you want to create real pure confidence. Very simple. Stay committed to the small commitments you said to yourself. And that's going to transcend into your real estate business. That's going to transcend on the phone. Now, another thing that I want people to understand is that it's corny, but I'm going to say something. We, when we hand the keys to somebody, right? Because I'm here in Destin, Florida, right? I, I'm in the trenches just like everybody else. When we hand somebody the keys, it's not just a key to open a physical door, but in a, a door to a new lifestyle, a door to being closer to a school, to a family, to you know, creating more memories, right? It's a bigger opportunity. So realizing that, man, what we do matters. Right, what we do actually matters. One of the biggest transactions of somebody's life, right? So we have to understand that. So first off, confidence comes from doing and keeping the small commitments to yourself. Number two is realizing what you do matters, and then number three, it's just Tom Billy said this to me. He said, "Be so damn good, the world can't ignore your job." And I said, "How do I do that?" He said, "One person at a time, right? One person at a time." So. Don't try to like get, oh my God, I convert 10 leads. Say, no, no, have one conversation at a time. One conversation at a time. One conversation at a time. And you use the word procrastination. People are like, yeah, I'm a procrastinator. Like, we're, we all procrastinate on shit. I got dishes that are need to be done right now. And I, I've been procrastinating shit from doing those dishes, right? Like, we all, but here's the thing we're not actually procrastinators. 
We are just shitty storytellers to the things that we need to do. Procrastination is not actually real, right? It, it, all it is is the story we're giving that task that's not putting enough meaning to create enough movement to get that shit done. So if you're procrastinating on making calls, yes, find a deep enough meaning to that thing. And that thing could just be, maybe it's super deep and super, you know, 12, 15 year mark, but I like next 12 weeks, what do I want? How much is it going to cost? And then go ahead and tie that to the meaning. What does that mean? Right? I'll give you a very small example. We'll keep it moving. So a couple of years ago, I wanted to put a brand new pool in our house, right? I wanted the pool. I want the punny green. I want the, the outdoor kitchen. I want the, I want it all. Now, where I grew up, I grew up, I was homeless, right? I, I lived in tents. I lived in motels, right? I never had that, right? That was never an option for me growing up. And I had great parents who made bad decisions. And so when I thought about doing this, I thought about, man, not about the pool. It's not about that. But I have a, a, a miracle daughter. Her name's Aria, right? I was told we couldn't have kids for, for seven years, three different doctors. We had another miracle baby, Brixton Brooks, long hair, don't care, little surfer boy. He's also, you know, a miracle. I, I think about like, Man, like the memories that Baker built, right? Walking right outside and just having a pool right there, right? That's an amazing experience I want to provide my children. And, and it goes so much deeper than that. So I knew I wanted in 12 weeks to just do whatever I can to make the most amount of money, right? And so I can go ahead and pay as much cash I can for it. And so that's what I did, right? I had a deep enough meaning that was a 12-week meaning. It collapsed time from where I was at to where I wanted to go, create accelerated action. And I got it done, right? Very fortunate I got it done. So the three things I would say is build your, your confidence through the things outside of real estate, though transcend into real estate, right? Create the, the, the meaning that overrides the mood, right? Stop taking action off a of mood. We take action off a of meaning. So find a meaning overrides the mood. Last but not least is tie a, a goal with that meaning over the next 12 weeks so that is more accelerated action versus, ah, my goal is in five years from now. Dude, I'm like... Hey, I think of a question, but then you like write three different things in a row that I need to like commit to memory for quotes and possibly get like tattooed on like my <laughs> fucking body. <laughs> like how is everything like a saying that I should use every day? Okay. Well, I haven't figured yeah, out. Dude, you really are. Okay. So this is, this is what I'm thinking. I'm like all with you. We're still before the call. Right. And I've hypothetically, I'm staying committed to the small commits to myself. So I have this confidence and I do believe in what I'm doing, you know, that the change matters and I want to be so good. The world can't ignore me. But my fear before hopping on the call is even hypothetically, I have that good opening line, but something that I'm scared of is, is not being able to know how to lead the conversation to the desired end state. Even if I get on the line, I have an amazing first question and I'm going three deep. But then I just go three deep forever without actually having a direction. Do you know what I mean? Like, how do I know to steer in what way to force the end state I'm looking for? If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Such a good question. There's a few things I'll lay out for you. First off, the more you do it before it happens, the more genuine you could be in the conversation, the, the more subconscious leaking happens. What I mean is, look at Tom Brady, right? Seven rings. By the way, did you guys see the roast of Tom Brady? Wow. Okay, it was, we did not see the roast of <laughs> You Tom have Brady. named, in this, in this chat so far, you've named, I think, 14 people that I don't know anybody, but I do, I have heard of Tom Brady. Sports. <laughs> oh my God. So Sports Tom, ball. Tom, Tom yes. Billy, by the way, Tom Billy Harvard referenced before, he, he created Quest Nutrition, sold it for a billion dollars. But now he, he runs the Impact Theory podcast. Tom Brady, which I'm glad that you know, he's only won just seven fucking Super Bowls, right? And so they, they did a roast on him. Go watch him. If you're not a fan, they just absolutely demolished this dude. There's a girl named Nikki Glazer that just terrorizes him in that, in that roast. Getting back on track. I, ha- I love her. Have, yeah. have heard of her. And, and yes, watch, continue. Just watch Nikki Glazer roast Tom Brady, and that's all you need. 15 minutes and your, your day would be made. Okay. Now, whatever the hell I was saying before. So going back to it, right? So we want to make sure that 
Tom Brady, right? Looking at him. We know him for his seven championships, right? Even Allie knows him and she doesn't know anybody I said so far, right? But we know him because of his, his accolades, right? But the reality is, is Tom Brady isn't Tom Brady winning seven Super Bowls without the shit that he does before he steps in there. So, you, you know, you asked me, hey, like, how do I get there? Right? How do I know how to navigate the situation? You do it before it happens. You get obsessive over practice, right? So, so you're 15 minutes a day, very minimum, so that when you're having a conversation, you know how to create the flow. That's number one. Number two, the flow sounds like this. So if everybody has a pen and paper, you just want to write it down when you're listening. It's a what question, right? This is the funnel, followed by a why question. This is where the hard part comes. You listen to understand, don't listen to respond. You extract information, you build a conversation, and then you go back into more why questions, two ideally. So once again, it'll sound something very similar. You know, how many bedrooms, right? They say four. Man, that's awesome. Tell me more. So why four bedrooms? Well, you know, we got three kids, we got one on the way, and we're over here crammed in, in, in a two bedroom. Then I stop. And that's where I listen to understand, extract information. Man, you got three kids. I went on the way. That is awesome. You know, when's the baby due? Baby's going to be due in September. That is amazing. What's the mixture there? We got boys, girls. Tell me about it. I, I got a boy and a girl. So I don't know if I'm done yet, but I definitely hit the, the, the lotto with that one. Oh, we got, you know, two boys and now we're going to have two girls. Whatever it is, right? Man, that's awesome. What's the ages? Is it wide? I'm not talking about the house here. I'm talking about them. Well, yeah, you know, we have obviously newborns coming. Oldest is 16. Right? That's, that's beautiful. That's going to be a, a built-in babysitter. So you guys got lucky on that one, right? So what would that do for you to be able to go from a two-bedroom with these four kids to a, a four-bedroom? Man, it'd be able to give us like a lot of peace and the environment would be a lot better and, and they wouldn't be fighting. What I'm doing here, right? What question? How many bedrooms? Why? What would that do for you? Listen, extract information, build a conversation. Then I go right back in. So tell me a little bit more, like what would that be able to do for you guys? So when you had asked me, hey, Shelby, hey, how do I navigate, right? That's the funnel. That's the funnel. But before that, right, I'm getting so damn good practicing that when it happens, it's just a subconscious thing, right? Go back. When Tom Brady sees somebody covered over here, he doesn't need to think about, oh, where do I go now? He did it a thousand times in practice that week, right? There's no energy. There's no energy. And so that's the way you really flow with it. You take that funnel, but you, you take that funnel and you practice over and over and over again. And I don't care if you have people to practice with or not. I've got an ISA. I can't practice with her every day. So she has to send me a recording of herself before she gets on the phone so I can check her energy and I can check her skill set. Are we good? Are we locked in? Let's rock. Let's roll. Let's do it. Right? So just making sure we raise our standards in a way we practice. So as I said, I have kids, right? And I always bring this up to people. I always say, hey, who has kids here? Oh, kids, are good kids. Okay, let's, let's play a scenario out here. Let's say a little Bricks and Brooks wants to play in the NFL, right? But first he's in high school, right? He wants to make varsity. What are we going to tell that kid to do? Allie, what are we going to tell that kid to do if he wants to be on varsity football? Do sports ball. Yeah. Do sports ball. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> Run. Hills, stairs, uh, yes, throw, catch, all, yeah. all the shit, right? All the things, right? Get weird with your workouts, boy, right? So work, you're going to go ahead and you're going to work, 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 work. He gets on varsity, gets himself to a scholarship. He's in the college. What are we going to tell that kid? Practice. He gets himself into a, an opportunity to get drafted. Hopefully by Dallas Cowboys. He gets drafted. What do we tell that kid? Practice. So we tell our, hold on, guys. Listen, we tell our kids. If you want to be the best at whatever it is you want to be the best at, sports, music, academics, you better fucking practice. But your mom and dad sitting here listening to this right now, and if you have kids or don't have kids, just listen. You aren't willing to do what you're asking your kid to do or what you're asking, what you would ask your kid to do if you have kids. So how the hell are you going to ask your kid to hold themselves to a standard that you're not willing to do for yourself? And guess what? If you don't have kids and you want to go ahead and, and, and ask them as they get older, once you have kids, to keep that standard, you better start now. Right? You better start now. So walk in a standard that you want your kids or future kids to be in. And so that's same with practicing, right? Same with practicing. This is real estate church right now. I feel like I just need to have my hands up and be like, jump. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. <I'm pleased. laughs> well, Amen. So how do you practice? Yes. So the, the big thing is is what I always look at. We talked about before my daughter, just she just finished her first year of coach pitch. She's an absolute answer on that softball field. Um, but before she gets in that battle box, she's in the cage. 
She's in the cage. Why? Two reasons. One, right? Muscle memory, right? Muscle memory, muscle memory. Number two is momentum. See, momentum is this silent, silent tool that we sometimes underestimate or undervalue that all of a sudden, if we're on a call, right? It's going to take 15 minutes for us to kind of warm up, right? Someone picks up. Ali, the first time someone picks up, if you don't practice before, I guarantee you're going to be like, hey, this is out. There's a stumble, right? There's a stumble coming at the block. So it's practicing 15 minutes before with yourself or with a partner. doesn't make a difference before you get on a dialing session. But then if not- Can we talk about that? Yeah, go, go. Yeah. Can we talk about how do you practice with yourself? Say, say yeah. whatever, your partner's busy. How do you, what do you do with yourself? I just, I speak, out loud. <laughs> We're going weird. All right, I speak out loud and I, I obviously record it, right? And then I listen back to it. It's one of the most uncomfortable things hearing your own voice. I, that's uncomfortable, right? We all, I think, can say, I don't like the way my voice sounds when I listen back, right? But what's more uncomfortable is you're at the end of 2024 and your ass hasn't gone ahead and hit your goals and that you haven't paid off that debt, that you haven't went on that trip, that you haven't gone ahead and paid that thing for your level. That's more uncomfortable, right? And, and, and in the words of Andy Frisella, when he talks about it, Andy Frisella, by the way, is a great, phenomenal you know, podcaster and, and he owns First Form. He always talks about it. Choose your heart, right? Choose your heart. Is it hard to, to take time to, to role play for 15 minutes every single day? Absolutely. But is it harder to sit at the end of the year and realize that you don't have the money you said you wanted to make? You don't have the things you said you wanted. You don't have the, the generational wealth of real estate? Absolutely. So choose your heart, right? We get an opportunity and, and, and it's in that moment that we have to go left or go right. Just choose the correct heart. So that's how we practice by ourselves. Just record it, listen to it, and then get into it. Dude, I'm so excited. I knew one. Andy Frisella. Yes! Gold star. <laughs> she wrote it in our notes. She wrote it in our notes behind the scenes. She was like, hey, at least we know one now. I'm like, no, that's still you. It's <laughs> not me. <laughs> but, okay, this, this takes me back to like when I first got licensed. And I didn't really feel comfortable talking to a person that I knew because they didn't really understand like what I was going for. So I would yeah. practice like random lines in my car or like in the shower or just like talking out loud, like just simple one liners that were obstacles. It wasn't like practice in the beginning of the conversation of, Hey, I'm really, I obviously you know how to do that. I would just like skip to the middle of the conversation. Is that what you suggest? Or well, how would you, for, for like solo people, can you give us a little more tactical? Yeah. For, so you're absolutely on that. And I'm going to give you the objection handler, by the way, for the number one objection we're all facing right now, which is interest rates, right? Uh, I'll give that to you guys here in a second. And by the way, this could also use uh, for the election, but you're absolutely right. It's called situational practice, right? It's called situational practice where it's like, hey, bro, I know I'm seeing this a lot. I better get really damn good at it, right? Or I know I suck at asking for the business, so I'm gonna get really damn good at it. And so absolutely, it's, it's you know, going back to sports, right? I'll just lay it out there again, right? If we know we're facing somebody and they're really good at this one thing, we're not going to ask the coach, hey, can you can you run this instead, right? Hey, can can we do this type of pitch versus this type of pitch? No, you can be like, oh, I know I'm facing this guy and he's really good at this. Throw that to me so I can get really good at it. But yet in real estate, you know, Ali's talking about, you know you get interest rate objections. We're curious how many times a week are you practice overcoming it, right? Or are you practicing on money, right? It, 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 or you're not even practicing on money so because you're so damn scared that you're going to get that objection because you're not skilled enough yet. Which one is it? So let's go with the objection of interest rates. First off, standing up is, is huge, right? I'm standing up right now. It's absolutely a must because your tonality comes from your diaphragm. And when you're on a calls and you're getting turned down or nobody's picking up or whatever it is, you start to slouch. It's just human nature. Then all of a sudden you start to slouch, the diaphragm starts to get crunched down. Your diaphragm's getting crunched down, and it's much harder for you to have a really good tonality. It's not just about what we say, but it's about we say it. So they say, hey, man, interest rates are crazy. I am not going to agree with them, but I'm going to understand them. Okay? So they say interest rates are too high right now. So look, I get it. I'm putting my hands up. I'm taking a step back. That's going to help your tonality really come off gentle. In understanding versus, hey, I get it, right? Versus forceful and salesy. Hey, look, man, I get it. Let's just do this for a second, all right? Let's just put interest rates going up, going down to the side for a second. Just curious, what, what how'd you start looking in the first place, right? So we'll rewind this, okay? Hey, man, interest rates are too high. Look, I totally get it. Let's just do this. Let's put interest rates going up, going down. I always end with down on purpose, right? To the side for a second. So what, how'd you look in a list in the first place? What, how'd you look in a buy in the first place? And I dropped my tonality down, creating a curiosity. Yeah, you know, man, we're just really trying to get into, you know, this place where my son can go to this school. 
whatever the case is. Now I'm in a conversation. Okay. Now I'm in a conversation. Then I can add value. Then when I talk to him about the rate buy downs, I talk to him about all the opportunities. Now he's going to listen to me. But if I come out and I'm like, hey, did you know you could date the rate and marry the house? Did you know you could get a rate buy down? They don't like or know or trust you yet. So you're trying to go ahead and convince somebody when they don't know or trust you yet. Then next time you try to do that, you have that thought in your head of they're going to turn me down again. Yeah, because you don't practice enough to do it with finesse. Dude, that's so good. Instead of attacking it head on, you do the, the fucking swerve. But yeah. in, you're right it's, with the tonality and the body. I was practicing. I don't know if you saw me. I was like, I'm <laughs> yeah. it's too much. I, I started to mime. That was not the right move. But OK, fuck yeah. Love that. So I... I want to do more of these, but I want to make sure that we hit on the opening line too, because you mentioned 80% of objections come from that opening line and we're all, I'm sure we're doing it wrong. What do we do? So there's, there's opening lines that are different for different sellers, right? We've got expired open lines. We've got FISBO open lines. We've got circle prospecting open lines and we have buyers. We've got online leads. Um, so we could hit so many of these. Let's just hit buyer leads really quick if you want, or expires, which ones we're seeing a lot more expired. Um, area. And I think a lot of people are too. And, and but we still obviously get a lot of buyer leads as well. Yeah. I'm indifferent. Whatever one is, is energizing you, the thought cool. of it. Let's go. Right. Yeah. So let's, let's go with buyer leads are really simple. Maybe a lot of you guys are buyers. If not, by the way, you know, we could obviously talk about the other one. So buyers that have signed up for something online, right? They, they, they came in off of a home search or whatever the case is, whether you're using a, a certain CRM that produces those leads to you, whatever it might be. And concept remains the same, guys. So I don't care if I'm talking to a buyer or a seller and I don't care what kind of lead. This just the concept's the same. So it's when we're calling few, what we call landmines, right? So let's play a scenario. Let's say we were all out to war, right? We're all out to war and I'm like, bro, guys, there's a landmine over there. Fucking who wants to jump on that thing? You guys are like, nah, I'm good, dude. I'm good. I'm, I got like dinner plans and I don't want to fucking possibly die, right? But yeah, we get on the phone and we're like, I'm going to jump on this landmine. I'm going to jump on this landmine. And those landmines are, stop saying their damn name. Sales gurus out there are like, no, say their name. People like to hear their name. No, they like to hear their name from people they know and trust. They don't know and trust you yet, people. Not yet. Okay? Also, how many times have you got a call and we're like, hey, is this Allie? No, it ain't Allie. You know, damn well your name is Allie, right? And even if I don't stop and say, is this Allie? And I say, hey, Allie, this is John Marone. That, that is what you will hold on to as an excuse to get off the phone. Ah, oh, this is an alley. Okay, so we don't say their name. That's landmine number one. Landmine number two, if they did sign up on your site, we never use the word sign up or register. Okay, register. What? What site? Sign up? What site? Okay, and then number three, this is going to hurt some people, is stop saying your broker's name. I don't care if your broker has a Look, I have helped coach Magnolia, Magnolia Real Estate. You guys know who Magnolia is? Chip and Joanna Gaines, right? Huge. They have a like a great, great, great reputation, right? I've coached 200 of their agents live. And I had to reinforce to them that I know how great your brokerage is. And it's got this name, your HDTV, your Magnolia Network. I get it. But when you stay your name, it's just like when Allie went to that car dealership and the guy came running out in his suit, he had soaking wet and her ass was crawling around the cars, right? To not be noticed. Right. Because he was like, I'm a salesman. So when we say we're with ABC Realty, all we're saying is I'm a salesman. And so we don't want that roadblock before we have value. So it sounds something like this. Right. Hey, this is John with the home search site. I noticed you're looking at some homes over in Destin. Hey, just curious. Are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? Here's my tonality when I say are you just browsing. By the way, why are we saying just browsing? We know that is going to be 90 percent of the time what they say. So when I hand Shelby this objection that I already know she's going to say, you will hear their response with laughter. Yeah, man, we were just browsing, which shows me their wall comes down. Now I can have a real conversation with them, right? Versus, hey, you looking to make a move or are you just browsing? Yeah, we're just browsing. You're going to hear a different response in their tonality compared to yours, right? So once again, it's, hey, this is John with the home search site. I noticed you were taking a look at some homes in Destin. Just curious, are you looking to make a move in the next few months or are you just browsing? Man, we are just browsing. Perfect, man. That's exactly what the site is for. Hey, well, I got you. What's, what's prompting you to browse? The flow of it is just as important as what we say, right? So that's the, the buyer side when someone signs up on a site for home search, whatever it might be. Okay, that's 
fucking magic. Can we, what is your one for circle prospecting, John? Yeah, so circle prospecting to me is one of the hardest. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Yeah. So circle prospecting to me is one of the hardest opening lines, right? But that's that's a numbers game, right? That's a complete numbers game. I, I like to go after expires and FISBOs because they already raised their hand and said they want to do it. That's my personal preference. But if I have an opportunity to go circle prospecting because maybe they're, they're you know, cheaper leads or you know, there's a bigger variety of, of numbers I could be calling, right? So I'm going to call and I'm going to do a little bit something different, right? Because I have their, their, their address, right? So I say, hey, this is John Marone with ABC Realty. Look, I know calling you out of the blue. You own one, two, three Main Street, right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Look, we got a ton of buyers that are just looking in the area in your neighborhood. But unfortunately, there's not too much on the market, I'm sure, as you know, and they're eager to, to buy and get their hands on something. Just curious if there are any kind of like price or terms that, that you'd consider selling for? No, not really. Okay. Well, look, I wouldn't be doing my job, but, but then ask, do you know anybody that possibly would? No, I don't know anybody. Then my third ask. All right. All good. What we've been doing for a few of the neighbors, just to kind of help them out, is keeping an eye on the market for them. So if you'd like, what we could do is just give you a, a value of what we think your home is worth, and you could take it, you know, and use it whenever you want. But at least you get real clarity versus using some other sources that really don't take into effect all the different, you know, factors that help you sell your home whenever that time is right. Would you want me to send it to you? It's absolutely free. I'm gonna ask three. I need to try at least three things, right? Are you looking to buy or sell? Price or terms? No. You know anybody? No. How about give me? You know, I can give you a CMA. I'm not going to say the word CMA because they don't they don't know it. But you know, can I get you the value of your home just so you understand what the true value is? So that's a circle prospecting, right? Hey, concept is I got buyers that are looking in your area. And there's not much on the market right now, so I'm just doing my due diligence and seeing really if there's any neighbors that would consider selling, right? Any kind of price or terms. So that's concept on circle prospecting. I really like the the first line. Well, I guess it was like second, maybe third. But when when you were like, is there any price or terms that you consider selling for? I think that's so smart that instead of are you looking to sell, because yeah. that opens the door in a way. Well, I mean, shit. If at the cert- certain price in terms, I'd consider it. Like, there's so much of an more of an opening for conversation than the standard line that people use. Yeah, it's and and it gives them a chance to think wider. Right. Like you said, because it's like, hey, would you sell? Yes or no. Would you consider, right? Any kind of price or terms you consider. Now they're thinking, oh shit, man, you bring me a million dollars. I thought, well, tell me, is your home worth a million? Now we're just in a fun conversation and who knows where it can go. Right. Cause you'll get that sometimes. You give me a million and you're like, hey, your home's worth 320, bro. Right. But I'm not gonna say that. I'm like, all right, well, you know, let's talk about your home, man. Let's let's see, you know, what's out there. You never know what we can get for it. I'm not gonna say yes, but it just opens up a better conversation opportunity. And then at that point, whether they want to list or they don't, they're going to be much more receptive to my next two questions. Do you know anybody or, you know, would you want me to go ahead and send you a home evaluation? John, let's role play. Let's role play the expired or, or FISBO. Which one first? Because I'd like to do both. Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go expired. Let's do expired. And there's multiple dialogues we can do with expired. I have three that we give our, our coaching clients. And then they get to kind of choose or make a, a blend that kind of matches their style. So we have three different ones, but then obviously everything else remains the same. So we could definitely do it. Cool. Done. Yes. It's fine. All right. right, So I'm going to give you a call. Okay. Yeah. Ring, ring. This is Allie. Hey, Allie. What's going on? This is John Marone with eXp Realty. Really quick. Do you own 123 Main Street? Yes, I do. Okay. Awesome. I'm calling you out of the blue. I know. But I was giving you a call. I saw that it was listed on the market. Uh, but it's no longer uh, in the MLS. What happened? Well, I am holding out for my price. The the agent, and by the way, you're like the 20th call. The, the, the yeah. agent that I used said that she could give me 600. And I know my house is worth at least 600. But 
I think we're just going to try again later, probably. Maybe. Okay. Well, look here. First off, I'm the 20th call. Let's not make 21 happen, right? Let's <laughs> let, let me do whatever I can to to field off these these agents calling you. But but reality is, so you know, you wanted to get 600, and that agent said that she could get it to you. Um, before I get into all those details, I'm definitely curious. What was the purpose of selling in the first place? It's I, I was considering moving to where my where my kids are at now. They're in a different state, so just selling the house here. But I don't have to. So that's awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, not having to gives you that luxury. So you have kids in, in another state. How many kids in, in what state? Two kids in Arkansas. Arkansas. I have okay. in Arkansas. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so over in Arkansas, two kids. That's awesome. How, how long have, have they been in Arkansas and you've been over here for? They've been there five years and they're going to stay there for, you know, the, the future. So I plan on just being with them. That's awesome. Do hey, you have any grandkids or anything over there? They're working on it. Working on it. Okay. <laughs> All right. We won't get into that. Allie, but that's that's going to be their business, right? <laughs> but that's that's beautiful that, that you're, you're you're willing to up and move to, to be a part of their their family. You know, that's something that we love to do is just be a part of that process. And so obviously we could talk about it, but let's kind of get back to the, the home not selling because it seems like getting over to Arkansas and being with your family, creating those memories is, is pretty important, right? Yeah. Okay. Why do you think, or maybe they said that the home did not sell for, for the 600,000? I, I, you know, they said a lot of stuff, but I just, I really, they said that they could get my house sold for 600 and, and, you know, I'm just very disappointed that we didn't get it sold for that. Cause that's pretty much what they promised. I don't know. A lot of stuff. I, just a lot. Okay. Well, let me ask you, do you know what their marketing plan was or, or kind of how they went about it? Because exposure is, is one of the main factors through you know, selling your house, obviously getting more people to see it. Um, what was their marketing strategy? Like, I'm, I'm super curious on that. Yeah, they, so they put it on the MLS and, you know, all that IDX stuff. And they said that they're going to tell my neighbors, which I could just tell them myself. I know them. They did a couple open houses. I feel like they, they, they tried a lot, but but somewhere it felt short. Yeah. Okay. And and so there's definitely other ways, right? That's that's one way MLS, IDX feed, telling your neighbors. There's actually other things like geo targeting, right? Running marketing campaigns, hitting up databases of people that match that are buyers that match your home. What I'd love to do and is is just kind of provide you a little bit about what we do here at at our office and help people just like you. We, we do actually work with a lot of people whose homes unfortunately didn't sell, and we bring in our eight touch marketing plan that gives them the understanding of, of how we could sell their home for more money in less time. Um, if you're willing to go ahead and have a quick conversation, we can kind of propose that to you. And look, I'm not going to ask you to, to list your house with me uh, tomorrow. I'm just going to show you kind of what we could do. And if it makes sense, then, then great. We could work together and, and find the right time for it. If not, at least you know a better way to go ahead and market your house and, and get more exposure. Does that work? Could we... Could we talk just more about it now over the phone? Like, what is the eight touch marketing? What What is this? Yeah, absolutely. So we certainly could. But what we find here is that whenever we just kind of talk about it and not physically show you, the value kind of goes lost a little bit in between, right? Because there's a lot of, of moving pieces. Almost think about it as uh, like a diagram, right? You could talk about a diagram, but when you see it, you can understand it much better and you could understand the process. And I think that's super important is to know what the process looks like from start to end and how it's all going to unfold and being able to see it through our, our presentation, essentially, is going to help you understand that. And by understanding it, you'll have clarity. By having clarity, I think you'll have more confidence in, in what we could do for you to get you that 600000 or at least, you know, whatever it's going to take for you to go ahead and, and move forward with listing your house again. Well, before I say yes, can I, being that you're the 20th call? Yeah. What makes you different from the other agents that have been calling me and somewhat telling me something similar? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, look, I mean, there's every age is going to unfortunately tell you maybe some things they can do and maybe not fulfill those as you felt before. Uh, but the reality is, is how we are different comes from we ask deeper questions to serve you at a higher level. Also, what we do here is, is we have this white glove service that allows us to be able to show you from, once, as, as I said before, start to finish. But more importantly, why choose us is, is the question you're really asking, right? And that really comes down to, is it a good fit? Do you trust our process? And that only comes through having a conversation via Zoom, obviously, so you can see our process or in person. And to me, that's the only way to really find out if someone's a good fit for you is really to see their process, 
meet them, go eye to eye with them and see if there's somebody that you want to partner with. Because in the end, I think you'd agree this is more of a partnership versus one working for the other. Okay. So okay. That, yeah, that sounds good. I get that, it. Like I said, I mean, the value to me doesn't come from how many homes you sold. We could tell you that we've sold X amount of homes in the market, but if it's not a good fit and there's not great communication and the process isn't clear, um, there's going to be friction in the relationship, which is going to cause some turmoil in that listing. So that's why, you know, we make it mandatory for us to meet with all of our clients face to face, whether it's via Zoom or it's, it's in person, uh, because we feel like that's an element to create a deeper communication and deeper connection. Does that make sense? That does. Yeah. Awesome. And, and really curious before we go ahead and set up a time. So you said 600,000, right? Is there a reason why 600,000? I mean, my neighbor, a couple of my neighbors have sold for 600 and I've during their open houses, I've been in there. And I know that my house is very, very similar. The updates that I've done are great. And I have put a hundred thousand into my house. So therefore it's worth a hundred thousand more. I love it. Dollar for dollar. (laughs) To the number. I'm excited (laughs) to meet you because tell me about these upgrades, right? Versus me seeing them. I'm sure it's a much different experience, right? And that's why me telling you about our process versus you meeting me and me showing you about the process is going to be much different. So I'm excited to meet with you. And once again, no pressure at all. We're a good fit. Great. If not, at least you have some knowledge on, on how to really go ahead and, and market and, and put more exposure behind your house and how to list it properly to make sure that, that you get that top dollar. So what we could do yeah. next, it's really simple. We'll just set up a quick 20 minute meeting. We'll kind of show you that process, but then take it from there. Does that work for you? That works. Yeah. Awesome. And then boom, into the close. Nice. Oh, I was curious. Should we go into close for like sake of time? Like, how do you do the, do you do does weekdays or week? How, what is your close? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so like for me, I'm in the secondary market, right? So I, I could hear throughout the conversation if they're local, if they're not local, but in general, and by the way, if they're not local, we must do a Zoom, we must do a Zoom. But it's, you know, so I can get to that point. It's like, all right, great. Looks like I got some time on Tuesday and Thursday. Do mornings or, or evenings kind of work better for you? Mornings. Mornings. Okay. Awesome. I'm a morning person. Uh, looks like here I'm pretty much available from 8.30 to about 10.30. Uh, what time frame works best for you? You need, like I said, 30 minutes probably, and, and, and we could be in and out. Nine o'clock works. Nine o'clock. Okay. So what I'm going to do, Ali, is I'm going to set this up for nine o'clock. Uh, but before I, I jump off, tell me, really quick, do you use like a calendar to run your day? How do you kind of operate your day? Oh, no, I'm, re- I'm retired. I don't really do. I just do what I feel like it when I wake do up. Really- I love it. I mean, there's, you don't write it down or anything. You just got to fly over to see your pants. Well, I do have a calendar hung up in my kitchen. I, I write down important stuff, you know, like birthdays. Okay. Or meeting me. That's an important one, right? Me, I mean, yep. Yep. Of okay. course. All right. So <laughs> I want to be on that calendar. When I come over, I want to see John Marone's name on that calendar. Can you do me a quick favor? I mean, just when we get off here, I, I obviously I don't want anything else, you know, overcoming our, our time together. And I want to make sure that, you know, we had the proper time and, and I'm going to make sure I got 30 minutes bare minimum for you. Can you just go over to that calendar when we're all done here and uh, just put John Marone, EXP Realty and whatever else you want to put in there for nine o'clock. Okay. Yep. I'll do that. Awesome. I appreciate it. I will see you on Tuesday at nine o'clock. Cool. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thanks, nice. John. Thanks, John. <laughs> Yay, John. <laughs> yep. But see what I did there? So there's this important part, guys, when closing. Whether it's a phone call or it's it's a face to face or a Zoom, I ask, do you use a calendar? Right? Ali wanted to give me a hard time, right? As she did the whole call, right? <laughs> yeah, so sorry. Like, oh, what? But what did I do? I didn't say, okay, bye. I said, so so what do you use? Oh, uh, you know, I, I have a calendar I use that's in my kitchen. Great. I want to be on that calendar. Am I? Can I be important enough to be on that calendar? I'm having fun with it, right? Like when I come over, I'm going to check that calendar. John, my name better be on there. All right. Can you just do me a favor and go put it on there? Now, if she said, yes, I use a calendar, I would then, even if I have her email, can you just confirm the email that's connected with that calendar? It's john at gmail.com. Awesome. Last request. I'm going to send you a calendar invite. You don't mind. Can you just hit accept for me when it pops up so it shows up on your calendar? Does that work? That works. Three yeses. The chances of Ali canceling on me has decreased every yes I got. Every yes I got. Right. So that's why I'm going through that process. Because I want to make sure that setting, because setting appointments is cool, but keeping them is even cool, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> let's be real, right? Dude, for sure. And Allie's tough. Like listening, I'm like, oh my God, if Allie's my my seller, like I'm quitting real estate, we're out. 
<laughs> but also, okay, the week that I cold called, that's the type of shit I got every time. Like nobody was nice, you know? So, and I know that that's how I would be, I think, if I were also an expired or FISBO myself. But that's, here, here's, I'm going to tell you this really quick. Because I was talking to my ISA about this. You know what you're dealing with. You know that they're going to be frustrated. So how do I come in cool, calm, collective, funny, right? Easy. How do I come in that attitude? Because if you're strict with them, you're only going to create more friction, right? So you know they're frustrated, right? So you need to open up. You got to get them to laugh, right? You got to get them talking about themselves and not the house. When I started having you open up about your kids, right? Like, I want you to open up about you because I'm going to take you away from the pain of the, the transaction process that just happened. And I want to hear more about you. And that's going to help me be able to then jump into the, if I just try to jump right into an appointment where you're already pissed off at ages, it ain't going to work. I got to get you opening up. And I do that by asking about you, trying to be funny and just really navigating, not so much of, Hey, what happened? I asked you that, but I didn't stay on it. Right. I didn't stay on it too much. Right. And then where's one important question I asked. And everybody needs to ask this question, right? She told me, hey, I didn't sell. I thought, we can get into that. I'm just super curious. What had you selling your place, you know, selling your, your house in the first place? Right? So asking that question, that's going to help me now go into talking about them, right? That's going to help me talking about them, which then takes her mind off of, you know, the last agent and then helps me create some value, then hopefully create a connection and, and set the appointment. So what, what would, the difference be between how you talk to expireds and how you talk to FISBOs. I don't want to go into the role play with the, with the FISBO because we're kind of running up on time here, but what are like the, the, what should we know about calling FISBOs? Their concept of a real estate agent is the same way an expired is, right? Maybe they had a bad experience. Maybe they don't see value in it. They think they can do it themselves. I mean, some can, right? Some can, but the whole concept is understanding that this person doesn't see value in you. And for whatever reason, it's not about you. You don't see value in the in the role, right? It's not you. They don't see value in the role. So take you out of it. Stop being so butthurt that they don't like you. It's not they don't like you. They just don't like the role, right? Whatever. Just like you maybe don't like it in a certain industry, right? So let's take the person out of it, right? It's just a, it's a role they don't like. And then letting them understand, like, you're here to serve them. Hey, how's it going, right? Oh, you know, it's kind of slow. Da, 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 da. And your know, old phrase. Bring me a buyer. Like, I absolutely could. What I'd love to do is, is hear more about what you're doing to, to market. And maybe I can give you some ideas that, that would help you. I give value on a call, just like I would for a coaching call. If we sat down together and you wanted to coach with me, I'm going to give value to you. And then I'm going to say, hey, in the last 30 minutes, you think I provided some, some good value to you that you could use in your real estate business? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. What I'd love to do is, is present to you kind of an ongoing relationship where we could provide a value to you on an ongoing basis to help you explode your business and, and absolutely integrate the rest of your life. I just added value, right? Same with the FISBO. And, you know, does that help you kind of seeing how to go ahead and expose your home a little bit more, how to reach out to agents, whatever the case is? Yeah, absolutely. I, look, I love an opportunity, you know, no pressure at all to show you our eight, you know, eight point, 10 point, whatever it is, right? Create something right? Touch plan or, or, or marketing plan or listing plan that'll help you sell your home and, and really take a lot of that stress. I hear in your voice that frustration, take it away from you. And if you like it, great. If not, just take my stuff and use it for yourself, right? And then what's going to happen? He's going to meet me. We're going to have a good connection and hopefully he'll work with me or she'll work with me. Dude, love it. Okay. John, tell our listeners about your coaching program and us. What, what is your coaching program? What do you have going on? Yep. So we got real estate mastery coaching. So we, I've been coaching for a very long time. We created Real Estate Mastery Coaching a couple of years back on the emphasis of understanding that real estate agents don't have a common place to go to, to really focus on mastering their skill set, creating structure in their life and their business that integrates together, creating an understanding of social media and how to really attack it and, and not make it so stressful. And then the biggest one is self-mastery. So it's called a 4S formula. So we coach on it's again, sales, social structure, and self-mastery. And it's a group setting. But within the group setting, there's opportunities for one-on-one -on -one calls that are a part of it. It's not like extra or anything. And so you have coaching on those every single Wednesday. And then a one-on-one -on -one call that anybody could book. Um, last year alone, uh, the, the numbers were insane. We we're growing people's businesses, 10x, 12x, 15x. And we coach everybody, right? We coach teams of, of 25, 30, teams of four. We coach individual individual agents. I got one guy, he's a part-time agent. He went from five transactions in his first part-time year, started coaching with us, 34 his first year with us. 
this year, I think he'll hit about 55. In his first in his second year with us, and he's a part time working 12 to six o'clock, but he indulges himself in every part of our coaching. So real estate mastery coaching, if you're into or need the assistance of really taking your business from where it's at to where you need it to go and incorporating the understanding of how to integrate your life and how to become a higher level performing human being, better father, better wife, better husband, better person to yourself. You can reach out to me on Instagram. So it's at real John Marone at real John Marone, or just if you go to our website, it's go real estate mastery.com. Perfect. Yes. Are you willing to share how much the coaching is? Um, it's a million dollars. No, it's, it's only, it's only 299 bucks a month. So literally less than one transaction and you pay for the year, right? For most markets, right? Three grand. So, you know, the numbers we have, I got to look at the exact numbers because we track everything, right? So if we, we give you obviously all the scripts, all the dialogues, right? We do role plays every week, all that stuff. But we also go ahead and we really have a high emphasis of making sure that our clients are well equipped with, we do a daily uh, ch- or weekly check-in. We do daily, uh, what we call must crush list. We do a weekly reflection. So a lot of these documents to really just prepare our week um, to integrate all of our lives, right? So like last year, pull these numbers up. Uh, it was insane. I mean, there was, it was over 2,500 transactions halfway through the year. I got to get the exact numbers, but we do really good because we integrate everything. But I tell everybody is don't sign up if you're not willing to do the work. That's one thing we do differently. We don't just give you, hey, here you go. I can enjoy your Wednesday, right? It's we do the work on the call. And sometimes it's really exposing some of our, our, our self in, 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 in a way where, man, this is my limited belief, man, this is my fear. I mean, work through it on a call. Or it's doing a 12-week planning where we sit down for 12 weeks and we plan our entire 12 weeks. Last week alone, we went in and I showed everybody my calendar and how they can go ahead and create a a structured calendar to go ahead and be more balanced and have better time management. And then I went through my CRM and showed them, all right, let's go through your CRM together. And we went ahead and cleaned up our CRM so it's a lot easier to navigate and and more effective. So we do a lot of work on the call. And I think that's a big difference with us. And we listen to big booty mixes before we start. Of course you do. Of course. I wouldn't expect anything else. <laughs> Why not? Right? Hell yeah. Sweet. Okay. So people can find you at Real John Marone on Instagram. Yep. They can find Shelby at The Shelby Show. They can find me at Ali the Agent. And we didn't even talk about a golden nugget. We're going to include a golden nugget at theagentgoldmine.com for free. Check it out. It's a surprise. <laughs> Except we didn't even cover it. So it's a surprise. If you have enjoyed the show, share this with a fucking friend who needs help learning how to get on the phone. So be a bro and share this show. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps.